How's it going everybody? Gunner here and today I want to introduce you guys to the pheasant rump crayfish. So there you have it. The super buggy all natural besides these little tiny antenna. <laughs> pheasant rump crayfish. So when I was in uh, New Jersey at the International Fly Tying Symposium this year, 2019, uh, I got to sit next to a gentleman named Jason Taylor. Now, I had actually met Jason before in Edison, but we didn't really connect. And this year, getting to sit next to him, uh, the dude ties like the greatest flies on the planet. <laughs> they are truly remarkable. And he showed me a pattern called the pheasant rump deceiver. And I, I think it's just something he ties, but it's like the sexiest two and a half inch all natural bait fish pattern I've ever seen in my life. I was just like floored by it. And so basically for the past two months I've been mulling over ideas in my head and I finally narrowed something down and this is a pheasant rump crawdad uh, and it's just a <laughs> it's the coolest thing. So I'm gonna show you guys how tight this. Um, I am gonna use an entire pheasant cape okay now you can find products if you want to save a bit of cash you can find stuff like just pheasant rump in a fly shop just prepackaged uh, whatever that is you know so it's all bound together pheasant rump problem is uh, you're only going to use, be able to use about a quarter of that the quality is usually not very good if you get a whole hide the quality is nearly impeccable uh, the pheasant rump is all this long stuff way down here and the reason I'm using the whole hide is because I'm gonna use some really short rump feathers for claws. You can see these have, you can see these just have this wicked cool kind of iridescent to them. These are nice short and they have a lot of kind of uh, mottled kind of coloring to them. And so I'm gonna use those to create my claws. And we're actually gonna take two short ones on the inside, flared out, and then two long ones on the outside, cupped over. And they kind of like fight each other and they create this fat little width area right here and the tips just kind of carve over but the feathers don't collapse and yet you don't get this weird ultra splayed out look so it's kind of a cool way to have the hackles fight each other and create this really nice illusion of claws and then we're just going to take pheasant rump at varying legs we're going to start long and go short and just palmer it up the body over small little material dams to create all these legs and all this nice bugginess and then to finish the fly, we're going to put basically what's supposed to look like a crayfish tail right on the underneath side. You can even see it looks exactly like a crayfish tail. <laughs> and that, that comes from way down over here. And the, the reason why is because when those crayfish flick, 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 well, when they're kind of cruising, when they do the flick, 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 and then they just cruise, and because you're animating this as with the streamer, you're going strip, 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 strip 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 I want that tail to look like it's always tucked under that fly and it's a pretty cool thing to look at especially if you're smacking a fly down and kind of stripping it over a fish and they can see that kind of tail silhouette tucked under there it's pretty cool so that's why I'm going to use the whole pheasant hide the only other material you need beside pheasant hide is uh, some accent flashaboo you can use any color you want this is kind of like a barred almost coppery color and you can just see I just have two coming down either side to look like antennas. That's it. And then some bucktail. And it doesn't matter the color of bucktail because we're going to use the natural brown stuff while on the back. And we're going to use those to kind of create the little carapace looking thing. Uh, it also kind of comes over and looks like the horn. And on top of that, it adds a stabilizer wing to help invert the fly. Because we're going to use a little dropper weight, a really small tungsten bead. Uh, because, in my opinion, all crayfish patterns should have a subtle jig, because that's how crayfish swim. So we're just going to have this nice, subtle, lightweight. We're going to help the stabilizers with the dropper weight keel the fly so it rides hook up so you can dredge it and work it right on rocks and drag it through the sand, whatever you got to do. Uh, and other than that, it's just pheasant. So let's check it out. All right, first thing first, I'm coming in with an A-Rex saltwater shrimp hook. This is a size 4. Uh, if you want, A-Rex also has a freshwater and the size 4 as well. And they're nearly the same hook. Uh, the saltwater one just has a little bit bigger bend, a little bit thicker wire, but it's a, a beautiful hook to tie on. I'm going to come in with monofilament thread. This is Danville 6 one thousandths of an inch monofilament. And something that's going to be helpful is I'm going to have some wax all the time with me. 
uh, to help kind of control these feathers and you'll, you'll see you'll see where it comes in handy because I'm going to use it right off the bat but anyway I'm going to lash down a nice little thread base here and I'm going to come down onto this bend so that because uh, the, the fly is going to ride like this and I want those hackles kind of pointed up at a slight angle so we're going to come down onto our bend and tie the hackles coming down the bend like this if that makes sense and right here I'm going to take some wax I'm going to just smash it onto my mono here real quick and the reason why is because I'm going to take just a pheasant feather and this one is kind of just waste I already used it I just have some kind of rough butt ends kind of marabou like stuff and I'm going to preen these off and just dub them onto my thread just spin it nice and hard work that in place here I'm going to do one more here and this is how I'm going to create a little bit of bulk throughout all the fly just like that a little bit of wax and then smash it around your thread and palmer just a little tiny bump Bring my thread up in front, so now I have a just an all-natural dubbing bump, and it doesn't have to be the cleanest thing you ever tied in the world. It just has to serve a, a function and a purpose. Now I'm going to come down here into these kind of really short rump feathers. I'm going to pair them so that I have two short ones and two long ones. And when you set the length, the reason I'm choosing too short and too long instead of four and cutting too shorter, because I want to be able to come back into this marabou section back here because way back here the heckle stem is actually much flatter I can even smash that with my scissors a little bit but it's much flatter and it's actually easier to tie in and control my feather orientation so I'm going to take that feather and again I want that to follow the bend of my hook down if you will that didn't lay perfect that right on the side really set that in place and then this one's going to angle up a little bit Awesome. So those are kind of this the base of my crayfish claws, and they're forcing out from that dubbing bump. <coughs> then I'm going to come in with two longer ones, but pulled from the same section. And these I'm going to veil just slightly over so that they maybe go a quarter inch past or so. And again, I cut that hackle way up here where it started to get all marabouy on me. You can even take your scissors and help flatten that heckle stem and your scissors so it's nice and flat. Then we're going to pair that right on top of the other one. I would like that, if anything, to kind of come over the top of that one. Yeah, just like that. Switch that down. Control that feather, looks good. Then I come put the other one on. Now, obviously, trying to control these hackles like this is going to frustrate the crap out of everybody, which is why I think it's really important that you choose the lengths correctly so that you can come way up into the marabou section so that you can cut it off in there pinch those things flat with your scissors if you need to and first focus on just getting that tied to the hook shank and then use your fingernails and use everything else and try to get it so it's perfectly flat on that rounded hook because if it's up at an angle it'll kind of flare up and then it'll flare away and 
you want it perfectly flat and you want both right on top of each other and you'll get this perfectly symmetrical hackle build that's going to look like crayfish gloss. And then I'm going to come in and get my accent flash. I'm just going to take two strands so that I only have two strands of accent flash. I'm going to wrap them around my thread here and I'm going to pin it right to the top and I'm going to take let this kind of relax so I should have two going forward two going back oh come on get away from each other get away from each other there we go and I'm just going to draw them to either side just kind of help control where these get set up I want them basically just on the inside of my claws, but I don't really necessarily want them right on top of one another so that they're distinct in the water. And then I'm going to come and just grab those and cut them, I don't know, about an inch longer than my claws. You can always make them shorter if you need to, but you can't ever make them longer. So make sure you got enough length on those. You can always trim them up later. I'm going to throw some wax on there. I'm going to take some junk here that's not being used for anything. Dub it in place. And build up just a little tiny thread dam. So I'm going to come now and I'm going to select some pheasant rump here and I'm going to basically move from the top towards the bottom and I want to find a really nice kind of long prime one, something like this, and that's going to be my first palmer. And then as I move up toward the body here and get up towards my tail and all that stuff, I want my hackles to get progressively shorter on me to match the shorter lengths of the crayfish claws and whatnot. So I have four hackles all picked out, starting long, getting short here. The way I like to tie these guys in, so I'm just going to come way back until the stem gets really thick, because if I were to palmer it back here, the stem would just kind of crack and break on me. Come just inside that, freeing off a little section here. Then I'll come up and I'll butt this on top of my hook, take a thread wrap over top, Take my thread from behind the feather back over top, and that's called figure eighting. Throw one wrap in front, a little half hitch, and a half hitch. And that's all you really need to hold that. And the reason we have a dubbing bump right here is because I'm going to palmer this hackle and then take my thread and wrap back over my palmer. So I'm going to collapse all the volume that palmering creates. And I need that dubbing bump to re flare those hackles. That is kind of the most durable way to do it so that you never have hackle stem just exposed because it only takes one tooth to break that stem and then your fly's ruined. We're just going to take some nice light wraps here. Catch that off. Freeing all these back. You see how, and like, if I could leave it like that, that'd be pretty sweet. But then, if you get a trout tooth in there or something, so you smash that down, it's ruined. But what I can do instead, and I want to manipulate some of these real quick before I just tie her down. There we go. And use that dubbing bump instead. So now I have mono thread over all that and we're getting the flare from a little dubbing bump. It's just going to be the most durable way you can do it and still have some really nice volume to everything. So then we're just going to progress all the way up the hook. I'm going to come up quite a ways here, touch this with some wax. I need to find some junk here. That's way too much junk. <laughs> Get that on your thread. Come back onto your hook shank here. And then we're going to come in with a slightly smaller feather. Again, I'm coming way up right before the stem gets kind of thick. 
give that a nice little cut. You can see I have just a small section of exposed stem, which you butt flat. I don't know how well you can see that angle, but it's butted flat on top of my hook shank here. Catch that with a thread wrap, figure eight that thread wrap, so I go from in front to behind and then from behind and in front. Throw in a double half hitch so she's locked in place and the mono can't slip on us. It doesn't collapse, I get a nice kind of bit of volume and these can all breathe and flex in the water. <clears throat> now, I'm going to come and tie in my dropper weight right here, so check this out. I was actually supposed to show you guys this first, but I got distracted. <laughs> because it takes a second for the super glue to set up. So I'm going to come in with a section of monofilament. And this is 0.028, so 28 thousandths of an inch. I'm going to run this the same way I run the dropper on my chosen one dropper jigs. And I'm just going to take my mono, pair the tips together, tie an overhand knot in this. Because it's pretty thick, I need something to pull against. Yep, that'll do. So I just have an overhand knot tied to my mono. Then I'm going to take some Zappa Gap. And I'm going to slather that sucker. So it's nice and wet. And I'm just going to come and take that little tip and cut this thing. <clears throat> now, uh, typically this would have been the very first thing I did so that that mono could set up. It'll take, you know, five minutes for all that stuff to kind of set and evaporate and do whatever it needs to do. But we don't have time for that. So I'm just going to wet my fingers a little bit. Touch that guy and call it good. <clears throat> now, I'm going to come in with a 5 30 seconds tungsten bead. And the diameter hole on this it's perfect for fitting over this mono. And it's really a nice amount of weight to just have a subtle jig and a perfect keel. So it's kind of a two for one. I don't want the pattern to be heavy, but I want it to swim like a crayfish. All right, so I want that subtle jig. And on top of that, the stabilizer wings that we're tying in with the bucktail, they do a good job of inverting the fly, but they don't do a perfect job because they're really short. A, a true stabilizer wing, the longer it is, the more effective it is because it all lifts up off that kind of hinge point where you tie it in. But because we're just using like an inch stabilizer wing, it's not enough to invert the fly without any help. So I'm going to take this tungsten bead here. I'm going to tie it to the underside of my fly. And I want to just see what this looks like first. If I were to tie that in right there and then flip this over, a little bit too far, farther than I want. Let's try that. So I shortened it up just so my mono is only sticking over the top of my hook eye, maybe a quarter of an inch here. Yeah, that'll work. All right, so I'm going to leave that. Make sure that's really tight and good up top. And I'm going to come and clear these buttons. Mono of my mono. So those are out of the way. <clears throat> and I'm going to make sure all that's tied in. Alright. Now we're getting somewhere. So my dropper weight's tied in. I'm going to hit all that with super glue just for durability's sake. And then we're going to come in with another pheasant hackle. Now I'm going to come in with some junk bucktail and I'm going to pull from way up here at the tip just so I have a nice dark color to this. Because even on a white bucktail, this is pitch brown right now. Dark, dark brown. And it's really messy to get up in there, but you do your best. You don't need a lot. I'm going to do two sparse stacks between these two sections. So I just want it just longer than my hook. 
I, I don't want it to, I want it to look like the horn of a crayfish head. It's usually right, you know, maybe halfway down the claws, a little less. So this is just going to bury my hook point. Get that a little wet if you need to so it all looks nice. Come in and cut that perfectly vertical. And get that right on top. And put that right there. And I'm going to take my mono that only has two turns and I'm going to pull straight down with a lot of thread pressure. <coughs> and then come and try to get those busts laid down there. Now for this last one, I'm not going to use a dub and bump at all. I'm just going to come and put that hackle up and try to cover a lot of this stuff. And that's just kind of a little veil up here. Look at all that nice buggy hackle down there. I love the look of that. I'm going to come up with one more stabilizer wing to finish the top here. Again, these are really, really, really sparse. I'm talking like, I don't know, 15 strands of little tiny dense bucktail. Because I'm using two of them, I can build a little taper between the two. So this one's just going to be a hair shorter. that guy right on top here. Didn't like the way that laid. She's not happy with me. I'm going to put down a little base here. Awesome. So that's my little tiny stabilizer wing that's supposed to look like a carapace down the back here. And then all we got to do left is we're going to take this dropper weight, flip her to the underside, catch it with some thread here, and you can see it's this big tie-in point, all that thread, all of our hackles, it's kind of lifted that weight up off of the hook, and that's going to give it a little bit more leverage over keeling that fly without us having to use any extra weight. And then this little flat tying section, because we've taken two pieces of mono and dubbed them over. I have a nice kind of like little flat thing right here. And that's where I'm going to come. And I'm going to intentionally choose one of these little tiny hackles here. That looks just like a crayfish tail. That's coming from way down here, kind of way up at the shoulder, because this would be the base of the head, way up at the shoulder these guys. I'm going to take that feather, print it to the length I need. It might help if you put some wax on your thread just to grip this because we're in pretty tight quarters here. I got it caught but not in the direction I want. Ha, ah, just like that. So that last step's obviously optional. I think it just looks wicked cool with that illusion of the tail. And then that kind of tungsten bead forces it away from the tail, so if you were to look at it from kind of a profile view, it's like the tail's tucked under, but it's not super tight. It's just a cool little accent thing. But I'm going to hit all this with some super glue to finish her off, and then we'll take her out and look at her. So there you have it the super buggy, all natural, besides these little tiny antenna, <laughs> pheasant rump crayfish.